good buddy James Cook over at his YouTube channel. Yeah. I am so excited. This is good. All right, guys, we're here on the bus shuttle on our way to Fremont with James Cook. And we're, uh, we're really excited, getting ready to go. I love that little flip. Yeah. Scream, Bobby is sold. Yeah. I am sold. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's indeed. Is that good? Do you like it? I love it. But I love it. it. Yeah. No, I love it. That's the one that I'm thinking of upgrading to at some point. All right, so I'm standing here in front of the live supercharger map. So if you look, these are all the superchargers. This is a live update of the amount of kilowatt hours delivered, the amount of miles being added, the gallons of gasoline being saved, and the pounds of CO2 that are being offset. And it, we keep jumping to different superchargers and we can see who's charging and where. All right, so we just got back from uh, the VIP tour, yep. and um, I kind of feel bummed because we couldn't, you know, the second we got in the door, they're like, no cameras! Right. So we couldn't shoot anything for you guys, and so I thought maybe if we just debriefed and while it's still fresh in our head, just talk about some of the things we saw, Yep. Well, what we didn't see. So we saw the Model 3 Alpha prototype, that's the silver one um, that we saw sort of at the unveiling of the Model 3. Right, so everyone's seen this car Everyone's right now. seen it. Um, it was awesome to actually see it with our own eyes. Yeah, it's right next to a Model S, which was really smart of them to really? put it next to it. Um, and it, it doesn't, the Model S does not take away from this car. It's not like you're like, oh, what, you know, that's the Model 3. Right. It's not like that at They're all. They're both beautiful, beautiful cars. Really, when you see them in person, I don't think any of the photographs I've seen have really captured how beautiful the car is. The tour was a pretty standard tour. If, you've, if you're a Model S or X owner and you've gone on the Fremont factory tour, uh, it was pretty similar. Um, there were some you know, some cordoned off parts that clearly were where the Model 3 production line was being built. And what was different from that, we did the tour last August, and, um, it, you know, it's mind-blowing, first of all. Um, it just, it was it, four or five thousand robots? Yeah. Can, can you just picture that for a second? I mean, that's that's almost the same number of people that they hired. So It's true. It's just robots everywhere you look, doing every job you can imagine, from giant robots that pick up the whole car to smaller robots, which are still big doing welding and doing all sorts You're of putting together parts. the motors yeah it used like to be that the motors were put together by people by hand right and now of course they're it's 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 automated yeah I, I want to point out this factory was built back in 1962 I think it was mm -hmm. a GM factory and uh, almost as soon as it opened I mean they've made all the clap car you know the El Camino has been made there and, and uh, you know everything up to the right. Malibu yeah. so this is a 1.2 billion dollar factory okay picture mm -hmm. that back in 2008 and then all of a sudden the f fiscal crisis happens GM goes back bankrupt and so they're a partner with Toyota at that point so now Toyota's like oh crap we can't afford to keep this factory all by ourselves so they had to sell it how much did they sell it for do you ask not 1.2 billion no 42 million dollars right to Tesla. cents on the dollar cents so, I mean, on the dollar you people wonder why uh, the company is valued so high because it's like they didn't you know they don't have all this capital they, they, they immediately got a billion dollar asset right it's all of the all of the value that they have as a company, it comes from 
um, opportunity and engineering and sort of like a stick to it um, For instance, the presses, they, they yeah, got let's them talk from, about a, that for a second. from a tractor trailer facility um, in it, Michigan. So they needed this, this, this press is so giant, it, it used to press parts for tractor trailers. Right. And you can't, it's seven stories tall, you can't it's just It's seven ship it. stories tall. So, so they needed it here, and that, we're talking it was in Detroit. Right. So how do they get it here? So they called up the company and they said, you know, how do we ship this? And they're and, like, and the okay, take it you apart. Can, you, you, you know, call us. We'll you know cut, we'll charge you thirty million. It, no, it was it was, like it was hundreds of millions yeah, was, of dollars. Yeah, um, and, it and it'll will take, take eighteen months. We'll take the whole thing apart and we'll ship it, it and rebuild it. And Elon was like, "No way! I'm making a team. You know, you are my best and brightest. Figure out a way to." He do sent it them cheaper. out there the next day. Yeah, you know, I'm flying you out to Michigan. You're figure it out. Figure it out. You know, we need it done faster and cheaper. So what did they do? They did it in three months for fourteen million dollars. And how did they do it? They, uh, I think they shaved off seven inches from the presses, and that allowed them to, you know, sort of ship it by truck and right, and by train like, or something. Yeah, things it, that have never been done before. Right, it's it's a mixture of engineering and we, sort of a we, stick to itiveness. Yeah, we can like do a, this. Yeah, of just like, you know what? If if you can't do it, mm -hmm. we can do it because we, we're engineers. We can figure this out. At every turn, Tesla does this. I mean, right. Uh, Franz was talking about the door handles today mm -hmm. of the Model S and how that had just never been thought of to right. do before, to have a car that basically welcomes you um, to the car. And I mean, it's so true. You walk up to the to the Model S. I mean, we don't do that that often, but I mean, and the door handle's open, it's a welcoming gesture. When we have auto-presenting doors in the Model X, the door's open for you. It's a very welcoming feeling. Right. Um, it's a totally different way of thinking about your car. Right, instead of you getting in the car and you turning it on the car is like hello would you like to go for a ride right. it's a completely different car company than than what you're used to so. now let's just talk about the Franz Q&A so after we did the factory tour they they bust us over to this other building where they gave us a really nice lunch mm -hmm. um, and a, there was a ton of people there and um, then they had Franz come out for, um, and do questions that were so we got to submit five questions um, I don't think any of our questions were were accepted. They were not picked. They, they can pick some questions. So yeah. they did the questions. They were very um, boring questions. Boring questions, I would say. And they're pretty, I mean, I love Franz, but I, his answers were, I think, very protected answers. Um, they didn't, you know, nothing even getting close to the Model 3. Right. And then, luckily, there was some open mic questions and answers. I got to ask a question. I'm so glad that that was possible. Um, I asked him, did his friends and family think that he was crazy when he took this job from you know, for, for Tesla, after having worked for GM and for Mazda and for, you know, VW and right. being this huge, big, award-winning designer, now he's working for this company. Picture this. The, the Roadster wasn't even out yet when he took the job. So th this is a car company that had no car, and right. he took the job. And he said, yeah, they did think I was crazy. And it, it took it, them a couple of years before it, that they realized what his decision was all about. But that he did that because he really loved the vision. He loved that never before in his career was he able to really shape um, a car with a totally different vision of what a car should be, you know? Right. All right. So thank you for bearing with us. I know we couldn't get you the, the footage that we wanted to, we, we were dreaming about, but uh, hopefully, you know, we've been meeting some really awesome YouTubers. We're about to go out to dinner with them. Uh, you know, yeah. You might need a nap first. Yeah, I'm going to go take a nap. <laughs>
go down the line and talk about what our YouTube channel is, starting with you, James. Okay, well, my channel is the James Cook vlog, I think it's probably the best way of putting it. You, it's you're, the you're most changed. British of the vlogs. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true. Really? Yeah. Yeah. You're coming up on one year now, right? Yes. That's yeah, amazing. Just a little bit over a year now. And you traveled the farthest of any of us to come here, right? Yes. You are by far the most jet lagged, right? Of all of us. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm Ben Sullins. I have Teslanomics, where the idea is to look at the data behind the company, and, and, and more so, which is because my background is in data science. So that's kind of where it started, was looking at actually just all kinds of random data stuff. And I did a video on Tesla, and it just kind of went nuts and figured out that's all anyone cares about <laughs> when it comes to me on YouTube. So yeah, it's, it's been fun and I, I'm doing, I'm trying to do more stuff. Like you saw, I had a, an interview or mm -hmm. a you know, video with you. We have other videos already shot with other folks here. So I think it's fun. I think just this whole forum is really cool um, because as, as Tesla grows, like we all get a chance to grow and kind of, uh, I don't know, I, I, I'd, like, I'd like to think that somebody over there listens to, and hears some of the things we talk about, maybe it helps shape some of their thinking a little bit. Hey, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. And you're watching Now You Know. <laughs> All right, so the, uh, we have a YouTube channel called, called Now You Know, but basically we uh, do a weekly um, in-depth and news segment on everything Tesla, sustainability, solar, SpaceX, you know, everything. Boring. Boring. You know, it's, it is boring, boring. Anyways, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a good point. We try hard. Um, and, uh, you know, trying. Uh, we've done some road trips and, and stuff like that. I'm Kim, and my YouTube channel is like Tesla, and we're a little more lifestyle. It's our family. We do a lot of road trips. We have two young boys, and we have a Model X. Um, we also do a little bit of news mixed in there, things that we're interested in, current events. I am the only woman vlogger here right now, <laughs> so trying to reach out to the women out there and empower them to start a YouTube channel. Yes, <laughs> go with YouTube, get into the tech. And I'm Ryan McCaffrey, I host uh, Ride the Lightning, the Tesla Unofficial Podcast. It's uh, just a podcast, there are, I've uploaded a couple of episodes to YouTube at people's request and I should do them all, but it's, it's just a time thing. But I do a weekly recap uh, every Sunday at 9 a.m. Eastern. A new show goes up, and it's uh, usually about 45 minutes to an hour. And it's just very, you know, I, it just comes from a very every man. I don't own a Tesla, so that's that's sort of my perspective. I'm the I like to say I'm the I'm the kid on the outside with his face pressed up against the glass, <laughs> hoping to get in someday. And uh, and you know, so the the Model Three Quest has been of particular. Uh, interest to me, so yeah, give it a look. It up on iTunes or any other major podcast service, and uh, give it a try. It's you can actually you can get it in the car as well, um, in your Tesla through uh, through TuneIn. You can find it in there. I'm Trevor Page, and I'm the founder of the uh, Model Three Owners Club forum and YouTube channel. Started the forum as a as a spot for all these reservation people who are not Tesla owners who want to learn about the car and just have a community where we can just talk about nothing but the car. And the YouTube channel really started off as, a, as, a, as an extension of that to educate a lot of people. Because I've been following Tesla for a long time, know a lot about the technology. So it was really about educating people, and that's kind of taken off too. So uh, yeah, that's where it really came you, about. You, you're the, often when I search for the more technical aspects of something about Tesla, I find myself on your channel. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, well, looking at batteries recently, you have like CAD drawings of everything. I'm like, man. Yeah, it's, amazing. it's 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 one of those things because a lot of the the thing with the electric vehicle, of course, especially with Tesla, is that there's so much technology in there that that people don't even understand where it begins. With. I mean, you can tell people about pistons and valves and stuff, and people kind of get it. Mm -hmm. But with this, it's like okay, we just peel the onion, you know, kind of away and show the interior. It's fine. That's awesome. You wanted a, basically a computer car. Well, I always wondered, I mean, if I can fit all this in this tiny little device, how right. come I can't fit it somewhere in this giant car? Right. None of that ever made sense to me yet. And, and they figured it out. And, um, and yeah, I mean, I still think I have an extremely high bar when it comes to technology. I still think there the improvements on the Model S, there's there's unlimited things that can be improved. 